All right, so we've got a uh, high silver off tank player here. Um, starting off playing Zarya, that's good. You know, Ryan Zarya is always a very good frontline tank composition. Uh, you've got a Lucio, which is fantastic, a Reaper, and a Brig. Like you've got a very good brawl comp. Um, and so basically, what I'm looking to see you guys do here is just to use Lucio's speed boost, walk up into their face, and just start hitting something, right? For your Ryan to start swinging, for you to start shooting something. Like, you should be able to melt through their Reinhardt without issue here. Um, they just don't have a lot of sustain. The best thing that they could do is try to speed him away, but because you have your own speed, you can chase him down. Like So the, the win condition here for you guys um, rests basically on you as Zarya as to when you bubble your Reinhardt. So... When you're playing Zarya, um, she works very well with Reinhardt because it's very easy for Zarya to build up her charge using Reinhardt. And so with that, you have to be uh, careful as to how and when you use your bubbles, right? To maximize your charge and to protect your team and, you know, build up your charge so you can do more damage and build grav quickly. Um, the other part is that, you know, you kind of have to peel for your team, right? You are playing the off-tank role, and as off-tank, it is your responsibility, or it is part of your job to pay attention to your backline. Now, you have Lucio and Brig, so Lucio can speed around and speed away from danger. Brig is damn near mortal, so you don't really have to worry about that too much, but if you had an Ana or something like that, uh, that would be something you had to keep an eye on. So... But that could come later. What I'm looking for here, what I think I'm going to look at closely here, is your bubble management and how you build charge and how aggressively you play. Um, again, between Lucio and Brig, you actually have a decent amount of heals. Brig does a surprising amount of heals so long as she can keep her Spire up. Um, but there isn't a whole lot of sustain aside from Brig's rally. So what I'm hoping you guys do is, as I said, you get in there very quickly and just start focus firing one target down. We'll see. Lucio you speed burst too early. So that's one thing. I notice a lot of Lucios, especially in lower ranks, use their speed boost right out of the gate. And on King of the Hill maps, that's fine because you want to get to point first or you want to be able to get that first engage. But on maps like this, um, you know, uh, 2CP, hybrid, uh, payload maps, anything like that, you want to save, your Lucios want to save speed boost until you get to choke. The idea is you want to use speed boost to power yourself through choke as quickly as possible um, and avoid all that poke damage. Again, that's not on you, that's just uh, as a support main, a uh, pet peeve of mine. Ryan's wasting his shield. Now there. So as Zarya, um, Especially when they're running a Ryan Zarya mirror comp, it is your job to pay attention to their Zarya's bubbles, right? So, right there, you saw their Zarya use projected on their Reinhardt, right? She used that way too early. Their Ryan was in no danger, so right there, back out, wait until that bubble burns down, and then you guys can walk in and just kill the Reinhardt, and there is nothing they can do to help him, right? You also have the Sim here, too, which looks like you're trying to teleport to point. Um, the other thing you have to look at is your Rhine's shield management. So your Rhine has been hard shielding the entire way up here, right? Which wasn't necessarily needed, but it wasn't bad. He was blocking some damage. He is protecting your team. He is waiting for that teleporter to get set up. Um, but because your Rhine's shield is lower than their Rhine's, their Rhine is currently winning the Rhine v Rhine matchup, right? So you have to help your Rhine. You have to notice his shield versus their Ryan's shield, and wait, save, and time your bubbles for when Ryan drops his shield. Um, especially if you are duo queuing with your Ryan, be sure you're talking to him. Let him know, okay, I have bubble for you. Drop your shield, take some damage, right? And that gives him some time to drop his shield, let it recharge, it gives you charge, right? You have to communicate with your main tank as Zarya. You have to let them know, I have bubble for you, you can play aggressive. Yeah, see that? That bubble wasn't needed there. Um, the Your Ryan's not taking any damage. Um, if you're not in 
chat, you're not talking with your Rhine, what you want to do is you want to save bubble until your Rhine starts swinging, right? When Rhine drops his shield and starts swinging, you can bubble him there because what's going to happen is then they're going to focus at your Rhine. He is going to start taking damage, right? So wait until your Rhine's taking damage, wait until your Rhine is swinging, and then use your bubble to engage with him, right? Because they're going to focus your bubble, it'll give him a couple of seconds where he can swing and do some cleave damage, some big cleave damage. It builds your alt charge, um, it builds your Zarya charge. Basically, wait until your bubble target, your Reinhardt, is taking damage before you bubble them. See, and then your your Ryan there too. Let him know that he's bubbled. You know, in lower ranks, their situational awareness is not there. So your Ryan stood there shielding while he was bubbled, right? In higher ranks, like as soon as you get to gold, kind of plat area, they're gonna recognize, oh, I've been bubbled. I can drop my shield. It'll probably take them a second to realize that, but they're gonna do it. Um, but again, you want to maximize your bubble effectiveness. You want to utilize that full two seconds that you have bubble, right? So let them know. I have bubble for you, play aggressive. He's going to drop his shield, he'll start swinging, start taking damage, and then you bubble him after his shield's down. Right? So you maximize the amount of damage your bubble blocks and maximize the amount of charge you get. Now here, you got almost your full 40 charge from um, from that bubble somehow. Like the damage I think was coming in from the side, so that's okay. But um, that little bit of shield management is going to be more crucial later on. Um, and the other thing, too, is that uh, we'll, we'll, sorry. we'll let this play through, and we'll get there as I see it. But you guys all use the sim teleport, which is fine. Okay. So, same thing with your self-bubble. Um, you know, you kind of want to wait till you start taking damage to use self-bubble. Um, and... The other thing too with your with your bubbles with your bubble management, your self bubble has a ten second cool, um, and your projected bubble only has an eight second, I believe it is. Um, and so because your projected bubble has a shorter cooldown, you want to use your self bubble first generally, right? So one of the things is when you're in the brawl, what you can do is kind of jump in front of your Rhine, use your self bubble, take some damage, and then back up behind Rhine's shield. Right, and then use your projected bubble, let him take some damage, and by the time you use your projected, your self bubble will be on a couple seconds, like from the cooldown. Um, and that's kind of the the idea, the little uh leapfrog play that you're going with Ryan, where you jump in front, take some damage, back behind Ryan, let him take some damage, and then you just kind of cycle back and forth. Right? That's kind of the ideal um situation when you're approaching the team fight. Of course, when you get into the team fight, Especially in the lower ranks, all hell breaks loose and it just turns into utter chaos. So it uh, it degrades from there, but that's kind of where you want to be. So that projected bubble wasn't needed. Whoever you just bubbled there wasn't in danger of taking damage. I like punching through the shield, though. That's good. Um, the punching through the shield is good um, because, you know, you do cleave damage through the shield. The shield doesn't block it. But the other thing you can do is as... Ryan's shield is getting lower, you can just try and burn down his shield. Just hard left-click his shield and try and burn it down. Um, but, I mean, their Ryan was going to die anyway. Keep chasing that Mercy. Could have killed that Mercy. I actually kind of want to go back and watch that team fight again. Like I said, the big thing I want to look out for here um, is your uh, your bubble usage. So there you bubbled Ryan a little bit early, wasn't needed. Right, he's not taking any damage, and you somehow get charge off that. Maybe it was the Lucio. Unfortunate, Uriah fell backwards. That self bubble was okay. Um, you know, they were you started to take a little bit of damage. Um, it looks like, but uh, again, you know, you still have uh, pretty high health. Like you took what, five points of damage there, maybe, and then they turn to look at somebody else. 
um, because probably because you bubbled yourself, right? So they smartly looked and targeted your Lucy. Their, your Lucy, it looks like, um, in an attempt to not give you charge, which is a smart play on their part. Um, I understand, you know, as soon as you start taking damage, you know, it kind of uh, freaks you out a little bit. But uh, definitely try and wait until you're being hard focused a little bit more, just to, as I've said, maximize the effectiveness of your bubbles. Projected bubble on your Reaper. Again, not really needed. Uh, Reaper has Lucio there to keep Ryan away. Uh, everybody there was safe, right? Reaper has self-heal. Reaper has Lucio there with him. And sure, their Reinhardt was swinging on him, but Reinhardt was low health. He's backing up. Um, and your Reaper really wasn't taking any focus fire. Um, what I would have done instead is looked towards your Rhin or your um, Symmetra over here. Right, because they're the ones who are in more immediate danger. Right, they're the ones who look like they're being focused. They're the ones who were taking damage. Um, again, wasn't bad. Again, the, the team fight's kind of breaking down. It's degrading, as I said. So, it wasn't a bad bubble. It just wasn't optimal. There were better targets. Um, and the other thing too is because your bubbles have such a long cooldown, you don't have to use them uh, on cool. Right, you can save them. You can wait. In fact, in a lot of cases, it's a good idea to hold them and wait. Um, you know, especially if the enemy team has something like a Genji, and you know they have Blade, or you you think they might have Blade, it might be a good idea to hold on to your projected bubble. Um, you know, and if you have an Ana, you know that your Genji's their Genji's first target when he blades is going to be your Ana. So when he blades, you can turn around and shield your Ana and give her an extra. Um, one and a half seconds, two seconds to survive, land asleep, or you guys to focus down their Genji before you kill them, right? So lots of interplay with your bubbles. You don't have to use them on cooldown. So again, self-bubble wasn't really needed there. You're not in danger. So there you could give it to your Symmetra, that's good, because, you know, Zarya is focusing your, their, uh, your Sim. And team fight goes. So there, you know, I... So in higher ranks, what would happen there is they'd probably leave, like, Symmetra on point or something like that, and you're going to get Lucio and everybody. Lucio especially is going to speed after this Mercy, right? And you're going to want to stagger this Mercy. You're going to want to um, make sure she doesn't get that respawn, doesn't get the ability to fly back to her team. Uh, so you and Brig probably could have chased her down. Um, you, if you had Lucio there, it definitely would have helped, but... Um, Again, that's like a, a team coordination thing, not so much on you. Um, I bet you if you had stayed with your Brig and just fired some right clicks towards the Mercy, you might have been able to secure that kill, but it's fine. So, you guys... Okay. So... Now, your your Brig was attempting to chase down the Mercy, which was the right play, except there was no one with her, right? So if your team was with her and uh, chasing down the Mercy, that would have been the right play. But because, you know, you retreated and fell back, your Brig should have realized that she was by herself and not pushed that, right? And so their Lucio came to save their Mercy, which was a smart play by their Lucio, and they isolated and killed Brig. Now, on 2CP maps, it is absolutely vital that you take these fights with a full team, right? So as soon as you guys lose one member, at that point, you have to realize, unless you have some crazy alt combos that you think you can pull off, that fight is lost, right? You guys have no ultimates as of right now, so there's no way you can win this fight. Uh, you will just be feeding, you will be staggering. Um, as a team, you guys should just say, you know what, we're down one, we're down, as soon as you lose one, right? You say, we're down one, let's just wait for our break, right? Let's back out play safe, hide somewhere, send Lucio back to pick up our brig, and then we push back in as six people. You know, and then your Lucio looks like he came across with you on the teleporter. How did your Lucio die? Okay. 
No, your Lucio is just feeding. So your entire team's pushing right. You're uh, using Sim Teleporter to get in behind them. That's good. I like it. I like the flank. But your Lucio isn't with you for some reason. Your Lucio is trying to be a Reddit Lucio and 1v6 the enemy team. Something. I don't know what your Lucio's plan here was. But your Lucio's feeding. Um... You know, and your Lucio dies pretty quickly here. You guys are already in. Um, at this point, you know, you guys are already in. Just go fight, try and build some ult charge, die on point. Uh, don't commit any ultimates to this fight if you build them. But you should not have pushed in at this point. Oh, well, that was a good bubble on yourself. So it was a good bubble on yourself as you were being focused down by Farah. Uh, the bubble on Reaper was okay. You know, Reaper was down in the brawl there. So, um, you might have been able to use that on Ryan to save him, but uh, it's unlucky you got charged. And yeah, you know, you guys lose this fight very easily. And now, your Lucio and Brig, back out, guys, back out, please, for the love of God. <laughs> okay. okay, good. So, self-bubble there. Self-bubble there, not... You weren't under any major pressure. Again, you're kind of being poked by the Pharah. Um So it's okay. Again, not ideal. You want to hold off using your bubbles until you start taking serious damage, right? That is... Um, I'm going to keep saying that all game, because that is basically the, the whole point of Zarya, is wait until your target, whether it's yourself or whoever you're looking at, your Reinhardt, your... your another ally is taking damage, right? Maximize the effect of your bubbles. Um, another interesting thing about bubble is that it can block shatter, right? So if you know there, Ryan has shatter, you can just walk up in his face, and as soon as you hear him say hammer, just hit shift, right? Or it's shift on PC, I don't know what it is for console, but hit your self button bubble, and your animation is faster than the shatter animation, so you can block the shatter, and if you're far enough forward, anyone behind you won't get hit. It's not as easy to block it as it is with Ryan's shield, because, you know, Ryan's shield is this giant rectangle. Bubbles this little thing, but you can bubble to block shatter and save anyone who's behind you. So that's one little thing you can try and outplay enemy Reinhardt's as Zarya. So bubbling the Rhine, that was good. He dropped his shield instantly, got charged. Um, whenever you see a charge target, that is a perfect target for a bubble, right? If your Rhine gets pinned or somebody else gets pinned... Perfect target. You bubble them. It's a very good use of bubble. That was a good ult by your Lucio. It was a good self bubble because you know soldier was focusing you there. Um, so that was good. What's your charge at? Pretty high, ninety nine. Look at that. Focus a soldier. I like it. Helping your Ryan, that's good. Right click into that, almost. Okay, bubble on your Lucio again. You know, he's kind of being focused. Hit that soldier, man. Soldier's shredding your team. A little bit late. I mean, a little bit late. Don't use graph here. Self bubble, I like it. Okay, so remember I was saying don't use graph here? This is why. Right now it is you and Reinhardt, right? Um, there's two of them left on point, but there's a couple more respawning, and your team is almost back, right? So right now you're fighting like a 2v2, which is soon going to be a 2v4 because there are Reapers right back out of spawn. Uh, at this point, you and Reinhardt should be backing up with your team, right? Backing up and regrouping. Um... Again, it's it's a risky graph, because, I mean, if you manage to kill these two, they're going to have a hard time recontesting. But at the same time, um, with grav or Shatter, you want teammates to be around to help you follow up on that. Um, the thing I'm going to say is whenever you grab something, right-click into it, because the 
the, the uh, right click does area of effect burst damage. And so you can, uh, with your right clicks, damage everyone in the grav. Uh, you can actually uh, right click melee. So if you get in close enough, you right click melee, right click melee, because uh, your melee attacks as well have um, an area of effect. So you can hit multiple targets and that would kind of maximize your your damage to all the targets in the grav. Um, of course, if you're high charge like that and it's just a single target you're burning down, just holding left click will be your highest damage. But uh, if you have multiple targets in a grav, uh, right clicks are generally the better way to go. And you can throw in melees in there if you're close enough, but... It's an okay bubble on your Rhine. Kill a fire, kill a fire. Nice. Good bubble on your brig. Okay, so you guys won the fight anyway. So that was good. Um, so yeah, you're playing aggressive with your Reinhardt, which is good. As a team, you know, you guys were very brawly and you played well into that. You used some Metro Teleportly intelligently. Um, as a team, you guys are doing really well. Um, your bubble usage was not fantastic. I think that is the biggest part. Um, is just managing your bubbles a little better. Uh, as I've been saying all game, wait until your target is taking a little bit of damage, wait until they're being focused, and then use bubble. Um, your grav was fine, I guess. Uh, again, I would have pulled back a little bit and waited until you had more of your team with you to follow up on a grav. But, because uh, grav is such a big ultimate, it is a game-winning team wiping ultimate right it is such a valuable ultimate and it builds so slowly you cannot afford to waste it so you have to be very smart about it um again you know it, you were you saw a couple of people there you caught a couple of people in it and reinhardt was with you we were winning the fight so it wasn't a terrible use of it you didn't waste it it was just a risky one Oh no, seal. Okay. So let's see how you play Sigma. So you're running Sigma Ball. Um Sigma is really no longer considered a main tank um because he doesn't have that same effectiveness as somebody like Ryan or Winston or Ball does. So Ball is technically considered a main tank because he his primary objective is to get in, to slam, to create space. Sigma, you were as Sigma you were kind of more a supporting presence. And with his shield, now only ha not having 900 health, it's very weak, it goes down very quickly, and it has a cooldown between when you can um, project it, right? So, like Reinhardt's shield, like your bubbles, you have to be very careful about when and how you use your shield, right? So right now, this is fine, you know, you've got it set up. Um, again, where you guys are set up now, uh, you don't see this above plat, right? Um, by the time you get into diamond, people realize that this is actually a bad spot to hold. Um, most of the time, they're holding like back here. There's just a little bit more cover, uh, fewer ways to flank, not that far forward. They're up on the high ground or back here, something like that. They're using the environment to their advantage. Um, but, you know, in silver, gold, and even in platinum, where you're holding is fine. Because, again, this is just where everybody does hold. At least you're not right in their spawn. see what you do with this. Sigma Ball is also a bit of a weird tank composition. So Ball is very, very divey, right? He gets in, he wants to try and get a pick or just disrupt the enemy team, disrupt their formation. Uh, whereas Sigma is a poke tank, right? He wants to be at a distance. He wants to use his accretion. He wants to use his um, Sigma Balls uh, to poke damage, right? So there is not a whole lot of synergy between the two tanks um aside from taking advantage of the disruption taking advantage of balls knockback uh there's not a whole lot that you two can work together with so it's going to be a little bit more individual play good boot by your ball kinetic kinetic grasp is your get out of jail free card Right? It absorbs all incoming damage. It's like Defense Matrix. It absorbs pretty much all incoming damage aside from like beams or melee attacks or hook. 
um, and it gives you shields for all the damage that you take in. But the thing is, is again, it's, it's a very long cooldown, and you have to be smart about when you use it. So right there, you had the only person poking at you was Diva. Diva doesn't do a whole lot of damage, especially when you're being healed. Right? Again, you're running the Lucio Break, so you don't have a ton of healing, but you have enough that Diva's Bullet Spray really isn't going to do much. Um, so Kinetic Grasp, generally, you want to save that until you are almost in danger of dying. Right, You are being focused down hard, and you can get good value out of it. So when you use Kinetic Grasp there, you are also behind your shield, and their D.Va had already retreated, so you got absolutely no value out of that. You wasted a very valuable cooldown. So like your bubbles, you kind of want to wait until you're being focused, wait until you're taking damage, and make sure it is projectile damage or a type of damage you can absorb. Shield's getting low. You need to back out. See, that was better, right? Your shield was down. Uh, you were being focused. Secretion. So, shield management, uh, one thing I'm noticing is uh, shield management is not fantastic. Um, you were letting it burn down very quickly. You're not allowing it to recharge. Um, the other thing, too, is when you're in close on somebody like that, you can actually fire off two Sigma Balls and melee without affecting your rate of fire. Sorry, one sec here. All right, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so with Sigma, if you're in close enough for melee range, you can uh, fire off two Sigma orbs and then melee, and it does not affect your rate of fire at all. Um, it's just a little bit more burst damage. It'll allow you to burn things down a little quicker, especially if you're in combat with Orion. But you never want to be in Orion's face because he wins that fight. I'm going to back up like you're doing right now. And you can kill that Orion. So if he had meleeed, you would have killed that Orion. Again, a bit of a waste of kinetic grasp. I mean, you're low health, but you weren't really taking damage. And again, your shield management there, you didn't let your shield recharge, you didn't call it back. That was a great use of Kinetic Grasp there, right? That was perfect. Call your shield. Let your shield recharge, just recall it, let it... Nice accretion, nice combo. Very well done. So, as Sigma, you are actually a good counter to Reaper. He can't really do much to you between your kinetic grasp, your accretion, and your shield. Like, he just can't deal with you very well. So, it's good that Reaper's kind of... He plays into you, right? Stay with your break. Get that rally armor. Yeah. A bit rough. Um... It's tough to block Shatter a Sigma. You can do it, but you have to predict it. Um, shield management there, if, if again, if you had recalled your shield, you would have had that for Bomb, and you might have been able to save yourself from Bomb, but uh, it's just kind of a rough one. That fight's lost. Don't, don't do that. Don't waste your shield. Yeah, just, just back up. This is uh, ballsy, risky. Recall shield, recall shield. It's not blocking anything. Yeah. You know what? That that's okay. I, I'm. That's not a terrible use of kinetic grasp. Junk rats on your left. Good use of kinetic grasp. So. Again, that's where shield management comes into play. If you had shield, you would have been able to block off that soldier completely. 
the, the soldier didn't uh, get any kills with it, and it was a good kinetic grass to absorb some of the damage. But it's one of those things that you can, uh, that you can do. Let's see how you use slam. Ryan wasted shatter. Nice with your shield. That was well done. Good try on the accretion. Chase that junk rat. He's low. He's going for mega. He's by himself on the left. You and your team can push that junk rat. So you're holding on to slam pretty long here. You should use it this fight. Um, it's good you haven't used it yet. There hasn't really been a good opportunity. So um, you can also use accretion to absorb fire strikes. Um, so Reinhardt's use fire strikes to build their ult very quickly, right? Um, I think every person it hits or every character that the fire strike hits builds them 7% ult charge. Um, and you want to prevent the enemy Reinhardt from getting ult charge if you can, right? So it's okay to use accretion to absorb Ryan's fire strike or big burst damage like that because it'll give you a decent amount of shields and it denies Reinhardt his primary source of generating ult charge. Now, Fire Strike is a longer cooldown than Kinetic Grasp, so you can't do that every time, but it's definitely okay to do something like that. So I am looking for you to use Slam this fight. Unlucky. You might have been able to slam a little bit earlier to engage that fight. What do you go for? Go for the squishies. I like it. Okay. So, good ultimate. Uh, you went for the right targets, right? You went for the squishies. You forced out Transcendence, so it's just unfortunate. There's uh, It was a good play by their Zen, um, but it was a good ult. It was the right targets. Um, the one thing that you need to be careful of is that recent changes, Sigma can now be stunned out of his ultimate. So what I would have liked to see you do there is kind of use your shield, place your shield up in the air somewhere where you think that you are going to be for your ultimate. And when you ult, you kind of play behind your shield, right? And that will help block things like Sleep Dart from coming through. Um, and then you also went down low to the ground. That is actually a very bad idea because there are all kinds of stuns that can hit you from the ground. If they had a Brig, if they had a McCree, um, they had a Roadhog, if they, if they had anybody with any kind of stun, then you want to stay away from them or put something between you and them to make sure that they cannot hit you with that stun. Because again, when, uh, when Sigma does his ult, when you actually um, throw them up in the air, you are basically standing still. And so it's very easy to hit that sleep dart as Anna. Uh, if you're close enough to the ground, McCree can hit you with a flashbang. Um, you know, if you're on the ground like that, uh, Brig can stun you. So stay away from the ground and kind of use your projected barrier as a wall in the air for you to play around just to block any kind of ranged crowd control that can stun you out of your ultimate. Unfortunate. You know, it was the right idea there. Kinetic Grass just has a uh, relatively small hitbox. So... You can also use Kinetic Grass to absorb ultimates like uh, Roadhog's ult, Pharah's ult, uh, Reaper's ult, Rav. Okay, so with Sigma, um, biggest thing is shield management that I'm noticing. You know, um, again, with barriers, you have to have a plan, right? You have to have an idea. What is my barrier doing? Who is it protecting? Uh, why is it there, right? If it's not blocking damage, if it's not protecting a teammate, if it's not protecting you, don't have it up. Let it recharge. Um, there are a lot of times where it was just sitting out in the open and somebody was shooting it down. You could have recalled it because it wasn't protecting your team. You just left it out like at choke while you guys were fighting at point. 
um, and then you didn't have it when you needed it. Um, so have a have a plan for your shield, right? Uh, kinetic grasp, you used it good, or used it good. English is hard. You used it well a couple of times, and uh, there were some times where it really wasn't needed. Um, so it looks like you do know when to use it. It's you might just panic sometimes, which is understandable, right? That that kind of mid fight panic happens at all ranks. It happens to everyone. Uh, you used um, Sigalt. Uh, you used your Sigalt well. You know it was the right target, so it was the right time. They just pop trans, and there wasn't much you can do there. Just make sure you're not on the ground and use your shield for cover. Okay, so they're playing Roadhog. As Zarya, I love seeing Roadhogs on the enemy team because Roadhogs are free charge, right? When they hook somebody, it is very easy for you to look at them and bubble them before Hog gets his combo off, and it's free 40 charge. It's an easy free 40 charge for you. Um, and you protect your teammate. You make sure they don't die. Uh, they it does pull like hog I'll, or hog's hook. Sorry, does pull your teammate into a bad position. But your bubble, three forty charge for you. You can save your teammates or from the initial um, contact at least. You might not be able to save their lives if they're in a bad enough position. But I love seeing road hogs on the enemy team. So let's see how you do that. So this is okay, right? That's okay. Projected, actually. Attention to that. Okay, okay. You know what? That actually wasn't bad. You know, your Ryan dropped his shield and went in for a fire strike, and you put your barrier on him. Which honestly, that's that's fine. Uh, I would have just made sure again communicated with your Ryan. You have bubble. You know, you can stay out there and take some damage. Um, ideally, you want to wait until you engage in the fight because now you've used both bubbles, so you don't have any protection for you or your Reinhardt. So as the enemy team, I would be noticing that. I would look. All right, Zarya doesn't have bubbles. Let's push in now. Right. Because they know that they have, what, 8 seconds before you can even protect your Reinhardt. 8 seconds in Overwatch is a long time, definitely more than enough for them to kill a Reinhardt. So, again, it, it was a good idea on the bubble. You know, your Reinhardt went in for a fire strike, and if he got hooked, the bubble would have blocked it. Um, again, I would have waited until until he got hooked, that way you get the free charge off it. But, you know, just let him know your bubble to take some damage, right? And he doesn't even have to swing into it, right? He can just stand there and take damage just to let you build a uh, charge. And then your self bubble here was good. You know, you're playing, you're up, you're playing aggressive. You're in Roadhog's face. You're absorbing damage, so that that's fine. Um, although again, you know, as I was explaining that Ryan leapfrog thing earlier, kind of want to be in a position where when your bubble does run out, you can retreat to safety, right? So you're actually not bad here because you can just um, you can back up in building here, but you're separated from your team. So you're in a bit of a risky spot right here. Um, I would be out in front of Ryan's shield here, and then you can just back up behind his shield. That way, you're a little more protected. Um, Sigma waste or Sigma, um, your app wasted both his cooldowns here. Like this lamp is doing absolutely nothing. You're not in any danger of dying here immediately, um, and it's very easy for the enemy team to just shoot this lamp down and completely negate it. And he used his uh, burst healing, which just catches you and him and again neither of you need that immediate burst healing so bap is just wasted his both his cooldowns and that triggers something in me again support main so i don't i don't like to see that good so Good bubble on your Rhine. You know, you're paying attention. Shield went down and you used it basically as a cooldown. Your Rhine was backing up, which is fine. You know, uh, Rhine never wants to be in a fight when he doesn't have shield or when his shield's on low health. Um, again, you know, your Reinhardt probably shouldn't have just been standing there hard shielding. Uh, he did kind of waste his shield a little bit, but that was a good bubble on your Rhine. Um, and same thing with your bubble. You know, you walked forward and you bubbled yourself. Again, you're 
What I would have done here is waited until Ryan's bubble faded, and then you walk in front of your Reinhardt and self bubble, right? So that way you gain maximum charge from Ryan's bubble, and then by you walking forward and bubbling yourself, you kind of body block for Ryan and act as Reinhardt's shield so he doesn't get burned down as quickly. But, you know, those bubble management has been better this round. Bubble your Ryan. Nice. Good bubble on yourself there. So, one thing is Roadhog's hook has a cooldown of 7 seconds. Your projected bubble has a cooldown of 8. So, you can almost always cancel out road hooks, Roadhog, Roadhog's hooks. Sorry, talking is really hard today, apparently. But, you can almost always cancel out his hooks with your projected bubble. So, um, that's the main thing I'd be looking to counterplay here is their Roadhog, right? If you can deny him his hook damage, their Roadhog is doing absolutely nothing, right? Their Roadhog is a throw pick. Um, Roadhog's entire utility comes from him being able to land a cheeky hook and get like an insta-kill or pull somebody into a bad position. And so if you deny him that, if you either deny him hooking your team into a bad position or deny their enemy Roadhog doing that instant kill, that a one-hit combo on a squishy, or even just doing 250 burst damage to your Reinhardt, then you just you completely make that Roadhog useless, right? So as Zarya, you are probably the best counter to an enemy Roadhog, right? Even more so than Reaper. Granted, Reaper can burn him down pretty well, but you know, so can Zarya when she's high charge. Self bubble a little early. You definitely could have bubbled your Ryan there. Um, you know, you kind of looked to the left when he got hooked to the right. Um, little mistake there, you know, you definitely could have saved your Reinhardt there. Uh, that's what I mean by completely countering their Roadhog. That bubble was absolutely not needed. That bubble was wasted. You know the Roadhog's back there. You can go push him, right? Roadhog can't do shit to you. So that Roadhog should not have lived. Like, Zarya and Reaper. Like, when you have Zarya Reaper on the enemy team, uh, Roadhog is a throw pick, right? Because they, again, Zarya and Reaper are the two biggest counters to Roadhog and Lucio, right? And bat, like almost your entire team counters Roadhog. Um, and so when your Roadhog was up behind you like that, just walk with your Reaper and kill him. If there's between the two of you, there is not a damn thing that Roadhog can do to survive. Uh, so this is a bit too aggressive. So you were trying to basically one v six them there. It was a good self-bubble to save yourself there, but again, it was kind of, uh, <clears throat> you know, a uh, panic that you shouldn't have been in that position anyway. Um, you know, as, as Roadhog, Roadhog misplayed that. Uh, their Roadhog definitely could have killed you there. Basically, um, what the Roadhog should have done is waited two seconds until your bubble was done, and then hooked you, done his combo, and then ulted you, right? And he could have just deleted you from the face of the earth. So their Roadhog misplayed that. You were in a bad position. In higher ranks, you were going to be punished for that. So let's go back here, actually. So you push forward here, your Ryan's going to point, your team's defending over there. Right? So... Yeah, look, look where everybody's on the map. Right? You're pushing from a side angle, which honestly isn't always a terrible idea, kind of going for this off angle to do some poke damage, but you are way too far forward. Um, I would be sitting with my Rhyn here uh, and just firing right clicks into this. So this isn't bad, right? You're taking an off angle, you're shooting in their back line, but you're just, you're way too far forward, right? They've got Rhyn, Soldier, Junkrat. If Roadhog hooks you, it's game over for you, right? 
which it almost was. You know, you got lucky there. So I would definitely be back here with my Rhine, right clicking. This way, if they do turn to focus me, I can just walk around this corner, right? And then go back to your team. Um, and then your Bap and Lucio, I don't know what they're doing. Your Bap and Lucio should back the hell up from that. They shouldn't just be poking against their shield. It looks like he's going for flank, which is fine, but. Yeah, so here in higher ranks, uh, even in gold, if you do something like this, you are going to die. Back with your tank. Play back with your ride. Play around cover, play around corners. Cover and corners are so important now, um, especially because after, especially because of all the shield nerfs. Oh, he did hook you! And you got discorded! Wow. And you survived that. That is amazing. With 40 health, so it looks like he just missed his melee on you. Um, so, yeah. Higher Roadhogs, or higher ranked Roadhogs, are not going to miss their melee. They're not going to miss that combo, and they would have killed you there. Uh, you escaped with 40 health. That is remarkable. Um, anyway, so that bubble in the Lucio, again, not needed. He wasn't in danger of dying. He was behind cover. He was safe. He was not being threatened. Um, your Reinhardt and Reaper, instead of going with your team, decided to shin this way. Um, again, that's not really on you. That's just where team play. Um, and your Reinhardt should have regrouped with you guys on point. It's an okay self bubble. Kill the Junkrat. Yep. So target focus can use some work there, right? You start on the Junkrat, then you move to the Roadhog. As soon as you hear tire and you know where the Junkrat is, just just go delete him, right? He's literally a standing still target, right? You cannot miss him. There is nothing he can do. It's on his teammates to defend him. Their Junkrat was in a bad position when he ulted. Punish him for it. And then you're at 100 charge. You know, you do an absurd amount of damage when you're at this high charge. Don't worry about the Roadhog, right? It's not easy for you to kill a Roadhog. Or it's not easy for anyone to kill a Roadhog. He's got so much health, and he's got his self-heal, right? And so all you're going to be doing is pumping damage into him. Um, you don't need to do that because you've already built your ult. So it's more valuable to your team if you start securing kills, right? So their Junkrat's an easy target. Um, their Zen's an easy target. Focus on the Squishies. Right, and just a little bit of target focus goes a long way. So, again, it's overtime. So I understand why you grabbed there, but again, your entire team was dead. You had absolutely no one to follow up on that. The good news is, is that you drew out Transcendence, but you wasted Grav because, um, you know, there was just no one around to help you. So it's such a valuable ultimate, can't afford to waste it like this. You need support, you need your team to be there. Pay attention to your kill feed, look at where your team is, ask yourself, is there anyone around that can help me with this? Right? Um, and especially because you have a Reaper, it's like, hey Reaper, do you have Blossom? Can you uh, can we combo this? Right? Um, yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, that fight's lost anyway. There's no way you're winning that. So. Sure, be nice to have Grav right now. Go see. Yeah, your Reinhardt's feeding. Reinhardt's not going to get quick spawn. Oh, he does get quick spawn. Good self bubble. Good job playing around a corner. Wasted um, lamp. That was a good projected bubble as well. You're getting taken off the map. Um, whoa, big charge by the Reinhardt. Unlucky. Um, again, you know, you. Let's, let's go back and watch this.
So your team's staggering right now. Like your yeah. that fight was lost. Your team should have just regrouped. So you shouldn't have grabbed there. They've got 30 seconds, right? So right here, your entire team is back. You know, you've got Reaper Alt. Um, you probably could have won this fight very easily, right? Um, you wait till Ryan drops his shield. I mean, he shatters you right here, but you probably could have grabbed him, right? It would have hit his shield. Um, the Reinhardt's dead. He wouldn't have been able to shatter you, or he might have counter-shattered the Grav. Um, Huge Reaper ult. The Roadhog should have killed Reaper there. So Roadhog can actually one-shot Reaper, even if Reaper's at full health. So that's why I say Zarya's a better counter to Roadhog than Reaper, because Reaper can actually die to Roadhog before Reaper can actually do anything. Again, higher rank Roadhogs, they see a Reaper, they can get an instant kill on him. Bubble management was a little bit better that round. Uh, you still wasted Grav. I don't really have mu I don't really have much else new to add to that. Um, you know, I'm still focusing a little bit on bubble management. Uh, positionally, you generally play with Ray Reinhardt, which is good. Um, the one thing I will say is you and your Reinhardt should be playing around corners a bit more. It looks like you don't spend a lot of time out in the open, but you know when you do, higher ranks are going to get punished for it, right? So you can't be out here trying to flank. Play around corners, play around cover, um, especially because shields are no longer as strong as they used to be. You cannot trust shields anymore. So definitely use hard cover, um, use sight lines, anything you can to uh, keep yourself protected and safe. So they're running Ryan Sigma, double standard double shield comp. Yeah, that's an okay bubble. Block uh, Reinhardt's fire strike. You're going to bubble back by the time you engage, so that's fine. Looks like you tried to get your Ryan there, but just missed. Um, So, right there, it looks like you tried to get your Ryan, which is fine. He wasn't really taking damage, so it wasn't typically necessary, but the big thing is that you were setting up Sim Teleport, right? So what you guys are doing is you're going right to point. And when you guys fight on point, that's when team fight's gonna break out. And so as Zarya, you need to hold on to your bubbles until the team fight engages, usually, right? So even trying to bubble your Rhine there was the wrong play, right? What I would have done is waited until we all teleported to the point. We're all on point now, we're all fighting. Now bubble your Reinhardt. Right now he's doing a Ryan 1v1. And so you bubble your Reinhardt here, and your Reinhardt's now going to win that Ryan 1v1 because he has bubble, because you protected him. Right? So your Reinhardt's going to die here now, and actually your Reinhardt's focused on the Sim turrets, which, actually, that, that's okay. Sim turrets are annoying as fuck. But, you know, your Reinhardt's going to die here, and that's partly going to be your fault. Right? You wasted bubble, you put bubble on him too early before you engaged in the team fight. That was good. So your self bubble there was good. Uh, the projected bubble on the Reaper was good. So um, another thing that your bubble does is it removes conditions um, like Anna's anti-nate. So your Reaper got anti there and he was in a brawl. So you put your bubble on him, he can suddenly be healed again, he's protected, and he can keep on going with his brawl. So that was a good projected bubble. It was a good self bubble. Focus that Lucio, he's low. Target focus, man. Target focus. Lucio is easy for you to hit, right? It's easier for you to hit Lucio than like hit scan characters or something like that. Your beam is just easy to aim. So you could have focused down on that Lucio, right? Or you could have tried to, at least. You know, he was low health here and he retreated back to behind a barrier and you're being pressured by the Reinhardt, but a little bit of target focus. Even if you die here, like I mean you're gonna die anyways, this fight is lost. 
know, they've killed enough of your team that you're not going to survive, but keep in mind that on these two CP maps, your spawn is so much closer than theirs. Any kill you make here is a benefit to you, because even if you die, you respawn faster, and you have a much shorter distance to travel to get back in the team fight. So if you kill their Lucio here, he has to walk all the way back from spawn. So Lucio is speed boost, so he can get back uh, faster than other characters. But I mean, just look how long it takes my to get my camera over. Here, right, that is a long way he has to traverse. Whereas you guys, you know, you all die, you reset, and you just you walk back here. Their Lucio is not going to be back by the time you guys get back, and it's a six v five for you guys. A little bit of target focus goes a long way. And your Reinhardt switches to Ball, which is a bad move. Your Ball should have stayed Reinhardt. Lucio wasting a speed boost again. So when you're playing with a Ball, um, wait until Ball slams down before you bubble him. Um, so because it's... Hard to hit a ball when he's in the air, but when he slams down, there is a brief second where he can't move. He is vulnerable. And nine times out of ten, especially at higher ranks, that's when you, the Ana is going to sleep and nade him, is when he slams down, because that's a very easy shot for them to hit. Right? Or their Reinhardt, you know, when their ball slams down, that's when he's going to churn and charge ball in here. Right? So wait until ball slams down and then bubble him, because you can block the nade, you can block the sleep, you can block the charge. Um, when he slams down is when he's most vulnerable, so that's when you want to bubble him. But it was a good bubble. It was the right idea. It was just uh, a little bit too early on the bubble. It's a good self-bubble. And that's why you should have stayed Reinhardt. Because now your tank line is weaker than theirs. Going ball is okay when you need to stall or you need to get back to point really quickly, but I mean, you guys had three minutes left, and it's not like your Reinhardt was doing poorly. I don't know why you bubbled Reaper there. Uh, that was just a complete waste. Good self-bubble. Um, again, your ball fed. Like your ball jumped in on point by himself and then instantly died. Um, again, like I said earlier, 2 CP maps, when you're attacking, you, you guys need to engage as a full team. So you see that one kill, you have two minutes left. You're in no real rush. Just back out, wait until your ball gets back, regroup, and push in as six, right? And tell your ball to stop feeding. So, now with ball, it's absolutely imperative that you engage with ball, right? So ball pushing to point there wasn't the bad thing. The bad part was the timing of ball pushing to point, right? Ball pushed a point when there was no one to support him, when there was no one to help him. So he died instantly and just fed all charge to the enemy team when he very well could have just gotten out and gone back to spawn, waited for you as a team, and then pushed back in. So he just staggered himself. He forced you guys to lose a little bit of time. Anyway, not really on you, but uh, it's definitely something you can talk to your team about. Just let your team, hey, reset, wait, wait for your entire team. Don't push in. You can't win a 1v6. You can't win a 2v6. You can't even win a 4v6, right? A 5v6, you're likely not going to win. I think the statistic is 80-something percent of the time. Um, uh, the team with 6 beats the team with 5, right? So if you have a 6v5, uh, it goes. it's still in favor of the team with 6 people, right? It's a numbers game. If they have more people, they have the advantage. Um, so you guys still have a lot of time. Don't feel rushed. Don't feel pressured, right? Um, so back to your play. Where did you use? So yeah, you wasted it. Wasted it on your Reaper there. So that was a good self bubble. Um, right now, again, your ball's dead. I would be telling your team to back out. Almost got the kill there. Uh, you know what? Reaper was in Wraith form. 
Um, I would wait until Reaper's almost out of his Wraith form to use Bubble. Um, try to delay that as long as possible. It's really, really tough. Because when Reaper Wraiths, chances are he's already low on health and trying to get healing. So it's not a bad play to use your Bubble on a Wraith forming Reaper if you know he's coming back to your team trying to get heals. Um, you'll protect him that extra two seconds and allow him to get healing. Um, but just trying to delay it as long as possible, again, to um, get that maximum effect out of your bubble. Um, again, it's tough because you want to have bubble on him before he gets out of Wraith form. Uh, because if he's low on health, one lo you don't know how low health he is, right, necessarily. Um, so it was the right play. Just... Again, timing a little bit. Uh, again, your Lucio wasn't really in any huge danger of dying there. You know, Lucio has a lot of mobility, so he can get out and around the corner away from danger pretty quickly. At that point, your ball was coming back, so I would have saved projected bubble uh, for your ball. So when he engages here, he has a little bit of protection and can probably secure a kill, or hopefully secure a kill. So you, yeah, you could have saved your ball there. So at this point, you guys are losing because you're not regrouping, because you're not resetting, because you are not playing as a team. You're trying to do too much individually. Staggering in, you're dying, staggering, dying. And this is the first reset I've seen. Wait for your sim. Bubble, bubble, bubble. A little bit late on the projected bubble. That's a good self bubble. I see what you were thinking there, but again, was it really needed? Okay, so that was the first... That grab wasn't terrible. Again, they had just used beat. It was good that you outweighed beat, but um, the beat shields fade fairly quickly. Um, so just wait a couple of seconds until um, the beat shields are far lower. Um, I know it's you guys are nearing the end here and you want to use it, but uh, you, know, you caught a couple people in there, which was fine, but uh, Reaper was able to wraith form out of it and they had all these excuse me, all these shields, so didn't really do all that much, just wait a few more seconds, wait until shields uh, drop a little bit, and then grab. Again, you don't want to wait too long because you'd want to get some value out of it. So, not an awful use of lamp by your Baptiste, but look where it is. It is so easy to shoot this thing. Baptiste could have just played it, placed it around the corner and still gotten the same effect, and it would have been harder for the enemy team to shoot because it would have been around a corner. Again, that's not you. It's, uh... So right here, you can hit Shift, Self Bubble, and you block the Shatter. So a little bit faster reaction time there, and you could have saved your team. Again, that's just one of those things that comes with uh, situational awareness, listening for sound cues, sound cues, paying attention to your um, your cooldowns, what you have on and whatnot. Um, I'd be going like Diva or Monkey here, something just to try and get back to the point faster. All right. Well, that was a tough loss. Um, biggest thing I noticed, as I said throughout there, is bubble management. Um, you know, you want to, um, as I was saying, wait until your bubble target engages in the team fight. Wait until they start taking damage, and then bubble them. Maximize the amount of charge you get out of it. Maximize the effectiveness you get out of your bubbles. Um, 
Gravs, you need to wait until your team is there to follow up with a Grav, right? You can't Grav by yourself and expect to get kills with it. Um, you're just going to get focused down or countered, or, uh, shattered or something. It's just not going to happen. You need follow up. You need teammates to help you with that. Right? Same thing with shatter. Um, use cover a bit more. You know, play around corners. Um, don't trust shields. Shields are good, but they're a lot weaker, and you just you can't trust them. They go down too quick. So use cover. Play around corners. Be careful with how aggressive you play. Um, in higher rank, some of those positions you are going to get punished for. Um, I think your other tank should have stayed Reinhardt there. If he had stayed Reinhardt, I bet you guys could have won. But uh, a Sigma shield management needs... Um, you need to let it recharge. It you need to, You need to have a plan for your shield. What is it protecting? Um, what sight line is it cutting off? You know, you don't need to use your shield to protect yourself from damage... Another thing you can do with it is basically separate the enemy team, right? So if the enemy team's pushing with like a Reinhardt or something, you can put your shield up behind the enemy Reinhardt, and all of a sudden their Lucio, their Anna, their Moira, they can't heal through that shield, right? So they need to come closer to the team fight in order to heal their Reinhardt, right? So you can basically use your shield to deny enemy resources, right, to block healing, to block ultimates. Oh. Kinetic Grasp is your get-out-of-jail-free card, right? Um, use it to absorb projectile damage, use it when your barrier's low, use it when your health is low, um, right? Use it as a safety measure to build up your health a little bit and let your shield recharge a little bit and let yourself get healing. Um... Other than that, you know, uh, pos positioning wise wasn't wasn't terrible. You know, as I was saying, just uh, play around corners a bit more. Um, make sure your teams are there to follow up with your alts and manage your cooldowns just a little bit better. I think you can definitely climb and stay in gold.